Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am here today to do a little sheet load alternative using the August 2022 sheet load of cards and the August 2022 box of the month from Not Too Shabby. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you haven't already checked out the August 2022 sheet load of cards, I will have the debut video where you can download the free printable as well as the process video where I show you how I made my first set linked in the description box below. This sheet load calls for 12 by 12 paper, but it is a really great sketch to use with your 6 by 6 paper pads. So I thought why not combine it with the awesome new box of the month from Not Too Shabby and create some fun fall cards. In front of me are the main supplies from the box I'll be using. As I get into the process later and add more products and tools, I'll be sure to let you know what those are. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Originally for August, it shows you how to use 12 by 12 paper to yield 12 cards, but I'm just going to be using the single card dimensions for this set today. Out of these three pieces from the Fall Sunshine paper pad, I'm going to end up with three cards. If your pattern paper has a specific orientation, you will want to make sure to pay attention to that when making your first cut. That is going to be 4 inches from the top. Then that larger piece from the top gets cut down to 5 and a quarter inches wide and the 2 inch strip on the bottom gets cut into 2 pieces. The first one is 3 and 5 eighths and the second is 1 and a half inches. Now I do give all of these dimensions and show you how to put the cards together a little bit more slowly in those original videos from the month so you can always check those out if you have any questions. Once again they are linked in that description box below. Next I brought in a piece of black cardstock to cut down per the instructions for CS2. I'm going to cut until I get three pieces that are five and a quarter inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall. These will end up matting the smaller pattern papers on the card front. And finally for the cutting, I got out some scraps of white cardstock that I cut into pieces that were 2 inches wide by 3 inches tall. To make sure the pieces for each card are correct later, I went ahead and put together what I call a card kit for each one. I did kind of play around with some of the papers to make sure I like those patterns together and you just want to make sure that each card contains one piece from each pattern. I brought in those strips of black cardstock I had cut and I put the smaller pieces from each of the card kits onto this. The pattern paper, the larger one on the left, gets aligned to the left and the smaller piece gets aligned to the right. There is a little gap between those so that is meant to be there. Off camera I cut and folded three card bases and now I'm going to put each of the card fronts together. I start by adding the largest piece just centered on the card front and then I add adhesive to the matted strip and that goes across the middle toward the bottom of the card. Now you could always move this up or down depending on your preference or what kind of embellishments or focal point you're using. Sheet load is always just a great jumping off point for your cards. 
Speaking of focal point, that is what I'm going to work on now. Originally for the sketch, these two by threes were meant for your image or sediment, but because I'm going to just be using these as a backer for my focal points, I wanted to add a little texture. So I brought in this embossing folder. I thought those kind of leafy branches would look good with the pattern papers. For my sentiment, I'm going to be using the Bloom with Grace stamp set from the kit, and I'll be using the Thankful For You sentiment. Now, because I need three, I did bring in a scrap of white cardstock that would fit all of those. I started by stamping one in the middle of the cardstock, then, after that was all inked up and stamped, I could easily move my cardstock up and down as needed until I had three sentiments on this little scrap. I love the Misty for things like this. Not only can you get a great impression, but it is easy to move your piece of cardstock and just leave the stamp exactly where it's at to get multiples. Off camera, I chose three ephemera pieces from the package that comes with the kit, and I added foam tape to those as well as the sentiments. I started by kind of matching up the ephemera with the card I thought it would look good on, and then I finished assembling the cards. The embossed piece goes flat down over there on the left, and then I popped up my focal point or the piece of ephemera and the sentiment where they would fit nicely on the card. I continued adding the ephemera and sentiments until all three cards had the fronts decorated. Off camera, I did use up all of the scraps to add a little decoration on the inside. And here I'm going to show you some close-ups as well as that decorated inside. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these sheet load alternatives using the not too shabby August box of the month. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.